All right. Good morning. Um, my name is Langley Gase. Thanks for inviting me to speak at GAA. If I want to leave you with one simple message, and that is we are doing it now. More importantly, our customers have been doing it for the past 10 years. You will not see CAD drawings. You're actually going to see photographs. And for that, I challenge we are leading the deep blue revolution. The opportunity. We've heard ad nauseum to yesterday and today is going to be 2 billion more mouths to feed by 2050. The open ocean, we're just starting to scratch the surface of what we're capable of, of farming out there. The challenge, it's a rough, rough ocean. We have customers in Panama who daily, daily see waves of two to three meters. You have to produce equipment that is not only robust, but is profitable for the farmer. Um, have, having been out there every day, bumps and bruises, it is a hell of a challenge. The solution is submerged farming. You are actually looking at not one, but 22 working fish cages 13 kilometers off of Panama. Albeit this is a relatively calm day, but you're looking at a farm of 22. Only one is at the surface. Why, why do we go submerged? There's a general rule, I'm an ocean engineer, the general rule of thumb is the wavelength from crest to crest. If you go half that distance down, you eliminate 95% of the energy. We've all been snorkeling around the, way, around the coast. It's choppy up, you go down, it's calm and serene. Why again do we submerge? Here's a side view of our equipment. It comes to the surface, you can feed, uh, harvest, clean, whatever you want to do. But at night, you can submerge it. Uh, when storms come, you could submerge it. We have never, ever had, in the 20 years of doing this, a major catastrophe from a storm. The reason why is we have a very simple but elegant design. The sea station, it's based on a spar, high center of buoyancy, low center of gravity, with a very, very simple buoyancy system. And it's time tested in the petroleum industry. Again, open ocean technology. Netting options, I don't have time to talk to you about all the netting options, but I'm going to focus on one which you see, and that's copper alloy mesh. Copper alloy mesh is relatively new to the industry, but a lot of advantages. First of all, contrary to its name, it puts hardly any copper into the environment, forms a patina, and it stays naturally clean but does not discharge it. Keeps out the seals and sharks. Um, it, because it stays naturally clean, all that wonderful uh, high oxygenated water comes through every 38 seconds free of charge. No energy required. And lastly, it's 100% recyclable. It does not go back to the town dump. There are challenges in our industry. We have to feed submerged. We can't use air to push feed. And because of that, we lack that ability to scatter the feed over the cage. So we've developed what you might know as a soaker hose. All these pellets get distributed evenly throughout the uh, cage, allowing the big fish and the small fish to eat evenly. Mortality management, yes, our customers do farm in warm waters where there are sharks. We have to keep morts or mortalities controlled. As soon as a mort dies, they're negatively buoyant. They quickly become positively buoyant. We've developed a trap that will keep them housed down there until we can suck them out. Yes, it is a funny looking cage. How do you harvest out of it? Don't have time to show you everything, but here's one concept where our farmers uh, harvest every Thursday for a Friday delivery. It's called a sea lift. Very quickly, you lower, you attract the fish in the top, and then you slowly add air in, trapping fish in the champagne flute, and then you pump it out. Here's a photograph, not a CAD drawing here, of these cobia off of Panama getting ready to be harvested and then shipped to Miami, Atlanta, New York, and Europe. It does happen. We are working on submerged harvesting, because one of the weaknesses we have here is when we do bring it to the surface, it gets washed up like a washing machine. We have one hell of a resume. Our, our farmers have been farming cold water fish, cod, salmon, warm water fish, cobia in Panama, milk fish in the Philippines, moi moi, sorry, yeah, moi moi in Hawaii, sea bass, sea bream in the Mediterranean, so forth. Open ocean versus offshore. We do not do offshore aquaculture. We do open ocean aquaculture. Case in point, 600 meters off the coast of Hawaii is a rough site. Next stop is Tokyo. That is open ocean aquaculture. 
On the other hand, in a few seconds here, we're going to move to Panama. It's 12 kilometers offshore, unlimited fetch. Next stop, uh, Puerto Rico, Antigua. We all know what happened to those islands. Our farmers continued to farm despite the ferocious waves that came through. So again, we farm in the open ocean, not necessarily offshore. They're just as challenging. Summarize the, the advantages of, of this technology. Submerged during storm events, we just talked about it. Theft and vandalism. Who's going to want to go swimming or snorkeling or scuba diving in shark infested waters at night? Not me. Thermoclines, <laughs> harmful algae blooms. Our customers have leveraged this in Korea going up and down to avoid uh, red tides. Aesthetics, the only reason why open blue, or blue ocean has a farm in Hawaii is because it's submerged. Initially, there was confrontation from the hotel industry. Not anymore. They love it. And finally, using technology like copper alloy mesh allows for wonderful clean water like you see here to come through and produce profitable and healthy fish. Thank you.